Call of Duty games usually don't give you the best guns right away. The early weapons in the COD progression system are meant to be stepping stones to the really, really good stuff. But sometimes, the developers can't help themselves, and they pull a fast one on you, and they make the progression as hard as possible by giving you the absolute worst gun out of the gate. What is up, everybody? Chaos here, and today we're going to be looking at the worst level 1 guns in COD history. Let me know which of these you use the absolute least. Drop a like, make sure you're subscribed, and we kick things off in uh, what many consider one of the best games ever. Black Ops 2. The MK48. I know I've said in the past that this gun was slept on. I changed my mind. This gun sucked. I tried. I really, really did. And revisiting Black Ops 2 in recent years has made me realize the error of my ways. The MK48 was your starting LMG in Black Ops 2, and while this game is generally seen as the most balanced in the franchise... This thing really could have used a buff, because it couldn't stand up to the other LMGs at all. It was capable of a two-shot kill as long as you hit someone in the head. Most of the time, you were killing in three to four shots. Well, I mean, that could be a serious problem when you're only firing 625 rounds per minute. I mean, it had abysmal slow handling speeds and a painfully long reload animation. I guess it was accurate, so you could get some cheesy long-range kills, but ultimately, the MK48 was mid-tier at best. Definitely not a great choice for leveling up quickly, and it was yours at level one. At number nine, the FR or the FHR 40, excuse me, an in infinite warfare. Now, IW had some interesting guns, but they certainly didn't have many interesting gun names. The FHR 40, wow, was basically a futuristic P90, but with all the personality sucked right out of it. The soul was gone. You know what to expect here. 50 round mag, SMG, magazines on top instead of bottom. But while the P90 had a lot of personality, the FHR felt very flat and boring, just like its name, which wasn't helped by its damage. Despite having the fastest fire rate of any SMG in the game, it had a horrible time to kill because of the incredibly low damage and extreme recoil. It was like the Scorpion Evo if it had required five shots to kill instead of three. The damage was low. The range drop off was crappy, so you almost never killed in less than five shots, which is embarrassing for an SMG. It sucked, and since it was unlocked by default at level one alongside the ERAD, which was one of the best guns in the game, guess what? Nobody used it. At number eight, the Olympia and Black Ops 1. If you're an old-school viewer of the channel, you probably know my personal feud with this gun. Double barrel shoddy. It features some impressive damage at point-blank range. It's supposed to, right? But the power dropped off quickly, which it's supposed to, I guess, right? Beyond 10 meters, it was inconsistent. Had a ton of really weird personality traits. For starters, aiming down the sights didn't actually tighten the spread like it's supposed to in Call of Duty games, meaning there was literally no way to improve the accuracy beyond crouching, which nobody was doing, or using steady aim, which didn't help as much as it could have. On top of that, the Olympia had zero attachments. None, nope, nada. What you saw was what you got, and what you got belonged in the garbage. It had this weird fan club, and they're probably going to show up on this video. It seems to remember it more fondly than it actually was, but I think it belongs on this list. It wasn't good. Let's move on. At number seven, the Carabin in COD World War II. Starting sniper, level one, COD World War II, widely hated by the community for how useless it was. For starters, you unlocked it alongside the Lee Enfield, which was absolutely everybody's go-to, right? It was easy to get one-shot kills. The Carabin, on the other hand, was a semi-auto sniper with a really cool sound effect, but a teeny tiny one-shot kill range and some decent recoil that made follow-up shots even more annoying. Between the two starting snipers in the game, it was undeniably the lesser of the two, and it would take significantly longer to level up. If you were looking for a good weapon to progress quickly, this wasn't it. Heck, if you were looking for a decent sniper, this wasn't it. There you go. At number six. The Scorpion, hang on, COD 4. I've complained about this gun many times on the channel, and I'm going to do it one more time because it deserves it. It was unlocked by default, level 1, alongside one of the best MP5s we've ever seen, so the comparison already starts off bad. But the more you played COD 4, the more you realize just how bad the Scorpion was, which explains why I can count on one hand the number of times I've actually ran into somebody using it. With only 20 rounds in the magazine, you would be reloading it constantly, but the reload animation was really long for some reason and cannot be reload canceled. So you were stuck with the whole thing every single time you hit the X button, which was constantly. COD 4 didn't have extended max. COD 4 didn't have fast max. So if you want to fix the ammo capacity problem, you were forced to use sleight of hand. But there's the big problem, because sleight of hand was in the same perk category stopping power, which means you'd be stuck with a pea shooter. So if you wanted to use the Scorpion, you either had a pea shooter with a fast reload time, or you had a mid-tier SMG with a painfully slow reload time. The time to kill wasn't even good. It wasn't. It was truly a useless SMG. And did I mention, the iron sights, they were terrible. They really, really had nothing going for it. At number five, the USP-45 in Modern Warfare 3. I know it seems a little unfair to put a handgun on this list, but the USP was bad even by handgun standards, so here it is. 
It was one of the default unlocks in Modern Warfare 3, and you never, ever, ever saw it. I mean, the FMG9 was unlocked by default as well, so nobody was even thinking about the USP or taking it with them into battle. However, if you did decide to use it, perhaps for challenges or whatnot, you would quickly be greeted to one of the weakest handguns ever put in a Call of Duty game. The fire rate cap, low for a weapon like this. Visual kick, pretty annoying, but the damage was also bad, so I guess it matched out. I have to wonder why they even bothered to include it. You were usually killing in three to four shots, which was really difficult when the gun was semi-auto and kicking like a mule. It was one of the worst secondaries in COD history. I don't think anybody's going to attest to that. At number four, the trench gun in COD World at War. When talking about the worst shotguns in COD history, the World at War trench gun has to be in the running. Pump action, it held four shells at a time, fired them off somewhat slow fashion. You also had to reload each one individually, which made it rather annoying to use because you were almost always firing two to three shots per gunfight, at which point you would have to sit in a corner for three to four seconds and reload your gun back up. The damage was not good, not for a pump action weapon like this. One shot kills were super satisfying since they could blow off lives, but they were so rare that it wasn't really worth using. World at War's maps design, I mean, it wasn't good for close quarters. And since the trench gun's range was so poor, it really wasn't worth using on 90% of the maps unless you were playing on something as small as Dome. You weren't going to have a good time with it. Or even on smaller maps, the SMGs were a better choice. The trench gun was just bad all the way around. Easily the worst starting weapon in World at War. Now we're getting into the worst of the worst. The Model 680 in Modern Warfare 2019. Speaking of bad pump action shotguns, it was one of the most bizarre weapons I've ever used in a Modern Warfare game. Standard pump action, rather slow uh, rate of fire powerful sound effect it sounded meaty with the massive kick and the huge boom it put out you would expect more one-shot kills but it, it didn't if you played the modern warfare beta you might remember a few viral twitter clips of people getting headshots point blank with the model 680 and giving them a hit marker you may also remember the general awfulness that it made you go through on your way to damascus no matter what you remember about the gun chances are you remember it in a negative light it fired slowly, it rarely got one-shot kills, and the reload animation was pretty slow It required each shell once again to be loaded individually, which puts you in the same situation as the World at War trench gun. In each gunfight, you were using two to three shots, and then you would go sit in a corner for a few seconds, and then you would reload. This also meant if you were caught with no shells loading, you were 100% gonna die before you could load the gun back up. Then to top all that off, the cherry on the top of the Sunday, the Model 680 was competing with weapons like the R90, the Origin 12, and the 725. Come on. Yeah, that's all I need to say. At number two, the MP5 in Modern Warfare 3. Now, Modern Warfare 3 is loaded with top tier SMGs. MP7, PP90M1, UMP45, and if you're playing through plutonium mods on PC, you even have the AK-74U. But you know what gun nobody used in that category? Uh, unfortunately, the MP5. Nowadays, everybody fears the MP5 because of its appearances in games like Modern Warfare 2019 and Black Ops Cold War. Even back in the day, people were spamming the COD 4 and Black Ops 1 versions. But something went terribly, terribly wrong with the Modern Warfare 3 version. It's awful. It's unviable. It baffles me. Smallest magazine, the bounciest recoil, slowest time to kill, and almost the worst range drop-off of every SMG, even in optimal conditions. It was low tier at best. There was no getting around it. No set of attachments, no set of perks would make the MP5 worth using over any other SMG in the game. And if it had been a late game unlock, there would have been some pissed off people in the community. The MP5 may have a legacy in Call of Duty, but the Modern Warfare 3 version, it's not part of it. And at number one today, the worst level one gun in COD history, in my opinion, has to be the M30 Luftwaffe, COD World War II. Unlocked basically immediately. They hand it to you. It's very pretty, but it's awful as a shotgun. I mean, the community spent countless hours trying to get a buff for it. Double barrel shotgun, pretty powerful sound effect, but as you probably guessed, the damage, it was, it, it was gone off in the cloud. The one-shot kill range was insanely inconsistent on launch day, and it took Sledgehammer months to buff it out. If I remember correctly, it actually took multiple times to make this thing even remotely viable, and even after all the patches and updates and the juice, the M30 still sucked. If you use the rifle bullet attachment, it basically becomes an iron sight sniper. Some people like that. But if you're looking for a shotgun to use as a shotgun, the M30 was by far the worst choice for the job. Slow, inconsistent, and it didn't even, it didn't even have the decency to blow people's limbs off. Come on. There have been some very overpowered double barrel shotties in COD history, but thankfully the M30 was not one of them. And there you have it, my friends. Those are the worst level one guns in COD history. If you'd like to see the best level one guns, you let me know. I'll see you soon.